morning. It's the 3rd of October today, slightly miserly old morning, um, but there's still plenty of colour in the garden. We had um, a heat wave at the beginning of September, so you'll have to see how things cope with that. Then we've had um, a few days of high winds, Let's see how we cope with that. Um, and yeah, there's quite a lot going on. Hardy annuals are ready to go in the ground, some are anyway. Ranunculus have just been um, soaked and are in for pre-sprouting. Beds have started to be cleared, so plenty to, um, plenty of interest really, plenty to keep me busy. So another month has gone by without me managing to get at the wild area under the apple tree, but it will happen hopefully before next month. So let's whiz on. Um, plenty of apples in the apple tree, which is quite nice. Lots of brown leaves. Um, let's crack on and have a look at the garden starting at the top. Apple mint, um, a few usable scraps in there somewhere, but not much. Nigella progress. So I sowed this just before a really, really hot spell. Um, have I got my labels? Yes, yeah, so there are some different labels in here. So I think they're different sorts. So this looks like it's dark, dark blue. Um, so those two are the same and they've come up quite thickly. But the ones over here, and there's two rows of Delft blue, and they're a lot weenier. So just, it just might be the seed. Um, it has eventually come up a little bit patchy. So uh, the scabious and cosmos has been cleared and actually I'm going to get some hardy annuals in here which are ready to plant out. So that's been weeded and a layer of compost put on there. And then the other nigella patch, self um, direct cell nigella. Yeah, we've got what looks like one, one good line, one, two, not a lot in this line, not a lot in that line, quite good there, reasonable towards the end there. So a bit mixed but um, saves a lot of time. Okay, next on my list for weeding is this area up here um, because I have got some biennials in mind um, that I'd like to put in here. I've um, got a few leftover things. And I'm going to try some more flowers in here. Okay, let's have a look at the hardy annuals. But on my way, I'm just going to point out this lovely um, blue salvia. I can't, won't be able to say it properly. I want to say ugliosoma or something. Um, so this was taken as cuttings with permission from um, Georgie New Newbury's uh, common farm flowers. Uh, she had it and it's, a, it's, it's lovely. It's so unusual to get a blue, a blue flower, um, so, but it is quite late. Everything else is just getting quite big now. Okay, so here we go pan around, see how things have changed since last month. Right, let's start on the left hand side. So the Monada is going great guns. It was still a bit young for cutting for drying, it went a bit wilty, but it's been great um, using it in bouquets and in arrangements with water. I've got the odd cornflower, self sown it's popped up so I wanted to leave that and there's another little patch over here very happy to leave those could be using those this weekend in a wedding um, anyway I digress uh, panic and frosted explosion has well and truly exploded the yellow status which we just about gave up on has come back great guns beautiful Locks brush blushing bride. 
I'll be using that this weekend too. I love it when things just pop up. So this looks like a bit of, um, uh, hmm. Now, is that dill or is that fennel? I can never quite remember. Anyway, that's just popped up. And we've got fever few popping up in various places, a second flush. Helichrysons, I've been cutting a load of those. So these aren't quite open. Um, but we've got a bit of heat again this weekend, so they're all gonna open very soon. And again, I'm hoping to use some of those for my wedding. Um, the Larkspur has finally been cleared and I wouldn't be at all surprised if quite a lot of these seedlings are Larkspur seedlings, but I can't quite tell yet um, until we get um, their second true leaves. So I'm gonna hang on for a minute. They don't really look like weeds. So uh, watch this space. And on the right hand side, the Phlox creme brulee, still lots of stems I can use there. That just keeps going for quite a long time. The second flush of the um, Clary, uh, it didn't last very long actually, it's starting to fade, but um, never mind. Status has been great. I've been cutting lots of that for drying, using it in fresh, um, trying to get rid of or making sure that it doesn't go to seed like these ones so that we keep getting fresh growth coming. The, I think this was snapdragons in here, so that's come out ready to just need to get some compost on there. And I've got some hardy annuals I can get in the ground, which would be great. And again, we had a good old go at the, these helichrysum, which were mainly red and orange ones. Uh, last week so a lot of those um, I didn't need too many of them for my work so I dried quite a lot so these are the tighter fresher ones really love them right we've had a few gales so there has been a few casualties and the main casualty was my sweet pea arch which doesn't surprise me it's year two um, so the ones with the heavy foliage on there just couldn't cope with it so first one looks fine although it will get replaced this year um, but you need to be a bit of a midget to get underneath these because they have collapsed great fun if you're a kid oh the morning glory you can actually see it now there we go morning glory is looking fab that's gone over the sweet pea arch we have had to prop this sweet pea arch up as well, but I'm leaving those in there for as long as possible. Starting on the left, so I have cleared. I've left the lavender because there's a chance I can use some of these this weekend, and it was the better quality ones. Um, so I can hopefully use some of those before they come out. Fantastic crop of lettuces, which I've hardly eaten. Um, if anybody wants any lettuce, zinnias. So they've suddenly started to get a bit bigger. Maybe it's don't know why. So the Coral Beauty, yeah, quite an unusual colour. Bit of Ami just popped up. Um, hmm, this could be Mammoth, can't remember. Zinnia, Zinderella, a bit of green lime in there and an empty patch. The Cosmos was a bit of a casualty of the wind. There was a lovely fresh patch in the middle, which was so tall. Of course, got completely pulled over with the wind despite netting and string corralling and, and so on but yeah i've done a bit of deadheading so we've had a bit of a few things popping up again doesn't look so good on this side okay right hand side of the arch again the lovely strong cosmos patch in the middle got bashed by the wind so it's looking a little bit um 
a little bit moth-eaten really. Uh, more zinnias, not zinnias, more helichrysum, which oh, do really well with me. Um, so this is my direct zone, Phacelia and Annie, which was done very late, but worth doing. Bearing in mind Phacelia is a green manure um, and the Ami, I just wanted to see what would happen. So yeah, I've got a few stems of Ami in there. This Phacelia was actually self-sown, um, but I'm happy to leave that in there because it is a green manure. The Rudbeckia have been amazing. I've noticed one or two people have mentioned that. Um, yeah, really thick, quite tall, even the Sahara, which are normally quite diddy. That must be, oh my goodness, 70, 80 centimetres tall. So yeah, really pleased with the ridbeck here. And then turning myself around. A couple of um, beds here, which just had some spare annuals thrown in, mainly so I can keep on top of the, um, I've got some nasty perennial weeds in these too. So at least if there's annuals, I stand a slightly better chance of keeping on top of them. Cardoons, I just love leaving those in for the structure. Right, let's have a look at the next patch. The Tithonia have been really good. I could do with a bit of deadheading, but um, I love them. Definitely going to do those again. And the Sunflower, getting really tall, a little bit on the leggy side, but still fun to use. Again, some of those colours are going to work this weekend. A little patch of Cosmos, that one seems to have survived. And then on the other side, I've taken out quite a lot of the scabious. Um, it, that heat wave at the beginning of September kind of finished off quite a lot of things. I have left in this one, but I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not. It'll come out soon. I do just love the colour of it. More Helichrysum. Um, and then some flax and lipidium, which I left to save the seed of, which I have saved the seed so that can come out now. Okay, this looks a bit empty now, unusually. Uh, so all the annuals have come out here and what we have done is I've sown a cover crop but the seed was very very old so whether it'll take I don't know but if it doesn't take I'll just throw some more um, I'll throw some handmade homemade compost on there difficult to tell it was only done a week ago so it's uh, not really yeah, no signs of it coming up just yet but there's plenty of other bits and pieces coming up so I need to have a clear idea what the cover crop is so I have planted it in lines I think I'm going to take the raspberries out this year. We'll see if that actually gets happened. That'll give me a bit more space as well. Right. Um, most of the perennials have pretty much had it now. Um, the only things that are still going is we have the Verbena bonariensis, which um, there's a little patch here, but I don't think it really likes it down here. Right, the biddins, which I frantically try to get rid of, um, it just keeps coming back. So it's a bit of a thug, this one, so be careful if you're planting biddins. But it is fantastic at this time of year. Um, so it is quite fun to use, but I just don't want it here. And then, gosh, it's gone into the Veronica bed. Bit of Veronica, the sedum has, has now gone this lovely deep ready colour really so that's fun and on the other side um frosted explosion and seed echinacea um green envy i believe this is called so that's still flowering the white swan has pretty much finished the gypsophila has finished got a second flush down there of a little bit of achillea the pearl The um, Lysomachia clithroides, the gooseneck loose strife, um, lovely foliage on this, really lovely foliage, and this will turn a lovely orangey colour. Um, did much better than I was expecting it to. The good old 
chrysanthemum hippie love child. <laughs> it is still going, I love that. That's a definite keeper. Maybe not there, but it's maybe in the borders. And um, Echinops all gone to seed. Just a daisy. Finished with as well. Okay, so the little greenhouse. The Pelagonium smells divine. Um, so that's still going strong. And what else have we got in here? All sorts. Okay, so we've got some hardy annuals ready to transplant. That looks like corn cockle there. When was that done? 18th of September. So that's pretty much ready to transplant. Um, I transplanted a bit more gypsophila um, because I lost some of the first slot due to the extreme heat we had. Um, Olea's looking okay, I think I've got enough there. Um, half and half the ami, I think Again, that side probably just got a bit baked with the sunshine when they were rather small. Um, Diocus, again, a bit patchy, but enough. What have I got down here? Oh, I took some cuttings. So we've got various sorts of cuttings down there. Um, Cyanoglossum seeds, more cuttings, cuttings, cuttings. I'd like to do some more of those. And another lot of hardy annuals and then just transplanted those cornflower yesterday. Larkspur we transplanted last week. Quite a lot of Larkspur, yay. Um, and some white clary. So the Larkspur a little bit late in the game because they were actually first sown on the middle of August. Um, popped in my freezer and not freezer popped in the fridge um for two or three weeks and then brought on so but they're looking really happy now and they were only transplanted last week and there's roots coming out of the bottom of them already okay what we've we got lurking outside um so most of the biennials have been planted but um just for a I've just got some wallflower here that are really for me, they're not necessarily for cutting. I just wanted to see how easy they were to grow and how well they would grow um, on the awkward patio, beside the patio. Um, right, wildflower seed. So these plugs, I did these in little plugs and they are now ready to plant out. I just need to find the time to do it. Right, let's have a look at the big greenhouse. Okay, let's look at what's growing first of all. So the zinnias are twice the height in here. Now I have spotted in one or two places a bit of a green fly, um, like there. Um, so I've just got to keep an eye on the green fly. It's only been a bit worse than that. It's still not too bad, but they will take over. Um, yeah, and then the Zinderella zinnia. Which are these ones on the hull? Oh gosh, yeah, they have got a bit of green fly. Lots of scented pelagonium. Lots of scented pelagonium. More zinnias. Nothing much on the bottom here anymore, apart from weeds, but the shelves are starting to absolutely get full up. And some things have already been planted out. So I've done this jointly with another grower, um, which has worked really well. So we've kind of shared a bit of the, the, the workload, basically. And we have got, um, let's have a look down here. So I've got snapdragons here which I hope aren't going to be too diddy. And this is under a grow light, which is off at the minute, but comes on um, at twilight. So basically they've got light 24 hours. Um, whether that's the right thing to do, I don't know. But anyway, it's making them grow quite nicely. No heat. Uh, Gypsophila, Covent Garden, down there. I'll just run through what we've got. So we've got corn cockle, scabious, Gypsophila, Covent Garden, Various colours of cornflower, 
flurry sage, various colours. Um, and then, whoops, yesterday I started pre sprouting the ranunculus. So, nothing to see there because they were literally popped in yesterday. And I've done a bit of an experiment. I dried some of last year's corms. Um, I probably haven't tidied them up as well as I should have done. But anyway, I've thrown those in to see what happens as well. Um, yeah. So lots of... Well, we'll see what happens. So they were done yesterday. Soaked for about 12 hours. Soaked overnight because I forgot about them. And then, um, yeah, pre-sprouted in these compost trays, which I'm going to forget about. I'm not hardly going to water them. So I just need to keep an eye. Let's have a look at the dahlias. Honestly, it's been such a good season for, for the dahlias. And I have been trying to keep on top of them. Everything is slowing down. The evenings are much dark and um, colder. I've got a damp morning this morning. I didn't think it was supposed to be damp. Look at that. Still looking marvellous. I did a run through last in the last month's video. I'll just actually I'll walk down the middle again and just scan and pan from side to side. Okay, so now I'm at the bottom of the dahlias. Let's have a quick look around to see what I've been up to here. So, so those lovely cosmos, um, I kind of felt that they were coming to the end. Um, I think again, that heat just um, brought them on too much and they got a bit of a virus by the looks of it. Anyway, honesty is now in the ground. So I've got one bed of honesty. I've got one bed of Hesperus that looks enormous, which I hope um, isn't a problem. Um, I've still got a bed of I've still got some amaranthus that needs clearing probably now um, and these foxglove just went in this bed just went in last week it was um, some seedlings that were surplus to requirement from another grower they were apricot ones and I was a bit short on apricot and then this is the patch that I started off last June. They're looking enormous, a bit too big really. I'm just worried that they're going to flower before Christmas or something. Um, and then that lovely patch of cyanoglossum, which is a real bonus. It all self-seeded. I just kind of tidied it up and popped it in a in a bed. And hey presto, I think it, the, the weather's been favourable as well for bringing things on. So yeah, lovely to have that kind of summer colour here. And then finally, um, <clears throat> still got a bit more status. The pink is okay. Yeah, mainly pink with a few bits of other colours. The ones at the bottom haven't done quite so well. I'm not sure why. And then what was in there? So the snapdragons, I just, they just got a bit full of rust. They'd worked really hard. So um, I've replaced the snapdragons and the Amobi Malatum has come out and I've got all my uh, Sweet William in. And fingers crossed, I had a problem with the virus with Sweet William the last couple of years. So I've given them plenty of space. Um, they're in yet another different bed, so that shouldn't make any difference. Um, we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's the October the 3rd garden tour. 2023 uh, definitely in the twilight of our season and um, by the time I do the next tour all my fresh flowers I would imagine I'll have definitely closed the season and pulled a lot of things out and got a lot more of those hardy annuals in the ground 
So do tune in next month and see how the garden has changed here on the Cotswold Edge. Bye, see bye.